I've played mobile games for over 10 years. That's literally half of my entire life, and that's insane when you really think about it. I pretty much built this entire YouTube channel around mobile games. And yeah, I do play PC games every once in a while. If you actually look at my content, the vast majority of it is on mobile games. My favorite types of mobile games are shooting games, first-person shooters, and third-person shooters. But I'm curious, what about you guys? What are your favorite types of mobile games? Could you maybe give me a list? Go down below in the comments and give me your top three or your top five favorite mobile games. I'd love to see if any games make most people's lists. As you guys can see, I have played many different mobile games over the years. And the craziest thing is, is this list of games that you're seeing right here are just the shooting games. I've compiled a list of 80 different shooting games, either first-person shooters or third-person shooters that I've played for iOS or Android over the past like 10 to 12 years. And in today's video, we are going to be ranking these games on a tier list from worst to best. I want to prepare everybody who is watching this video. This video is going to be a massive nostalgia rush to a lot of different people because we're going to be talking about a lot of old school first person and third person shooters that you've probably not heard of in over five years, all right? So be prepared for the nostalgia and I just hope you enjoy this video and I hope it brings a smile to your face. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below for more videos just like this. As I said, I play mobile games, so if you play mobile games, you might as well subscribe as well. All right, guys, so with that being said, let's get this tier list started. We got to do things quick because there are a lot of games on this list and I don't want this video to be an hour long because you'd be bored. Let's just be very clear about that. So this thing is going to be a lot quicker than you might have expected. We're going to start off with After Pulse. This is a game that back in the day was ahead of its time. It was actually a really fun game, third person shooter, and I really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, it's not gotten too many updates over the years and I think it's probably a C tier game now. I want to be very clear, C is average. That's like the middle of the road game rating that we're going to have right here. If you see a game at C, that's still a decent game. Anything below C is not very good. Anything above C is above average. So to clear up all of that confusion, let's continue on. We got Area F2. Who remembers this game? This game was only around for a very short period of time. It was the closest we ever got to Rainbow Six Siege Mobile. And in fact, it was so close that Ubisoft literally just sued them and shut them down entirely. I really wish it came back. And I think a lot of people remember it better than what it actually was. So they might have put it up at the very top. I think when I look back at it, it probably would have been between an S and an S+. I'm going to give it an S+. Badlanders. It's basically Escape from Tarkov Mobile. It's okay. It's not really the best one out there. There are other Escape from Tarkov mobile versions that are better than Badlanders. So maybe B. Battlefield Mobile, it's probably an A-tier game. Right now, it's in very early development. When the first beta came out, I was very disappointed. It didn't look that great to me. It looked like a game from 2014. If they update the graphics to look more like even Battlefield 1, you know, not even like Battlefield 2042, but Battlefield 1 or something like that, this game will literally be one of the best ones out there. But uh, right now, probably an A-tier game. Battlegrounds Mobile India, it's good old classic PUBG but it's for India. I played it a little while ago. I enjoyed it because I love PUBG. So yeah, it's an A-tier game. Battle Ops. A lot of people don't like this game, but it's really good because it's an offline game. It's very lightweight. And if you don't have any internet, it's one of the best options out there. There's tons of content, a lot of good gameplay. It's a lot of fun and I enjoy it. Battle Prime. I love this game. It is the most underrated game on this list aside from potentially one other game that we'll be talking about toward the end. This game is the best alternative to Call of Duty Mobile that you can play right now. It just came back on the Google Play Store. If you don't have it downloaded, you need to have it downloaded. It is awesome. Next up, we have Blitz Brigade. I'm sure we remember this game. We probably all played this game back in like 2015, 2016. This game was great back in the day, but unfortunately, just like After Pulse, it's starting to feel pretty old when you play it, so I think it's probably a C-tier game now. Block City Wars. This game is basically Pixel Gun 3D and GTA 5 put together. I played it a long time ago, and I haven't played it recently, but I've always thought of it as a pretty cool game, and I think B is a good rating for it. And here we have our first F rating game. This is Block Field, and all you gotta do is look at the icon of the game to realize that this game likes to capitalize on trends. It's basically a bad version of Pixel Gun 3D, and there's not much else we have to say there. 
We have another game that's also basically another not as good version of Pixel Gun 3D. It's Block Strike. This game has been around pretty much as long as Pixel Gun 3D. Unfortunately, it's never been up to par with the game. It's okay. It's fun. Unfortunately, nowadays, it's almost entirely filled with hackers. Bright Memory Mobile. I really want to put this game all the way up at the very top. The only thing that's keeping me from doing that is the fact that the storyline is pretty short. This is a single player first person shooter with amazing graphics, amazing gameplay, movement that's off the walls. It's literally awesome and it's made by one guy. The only reason that I, again, can't put it up at the very top is the storyline is only about two hours long. If they make the story longer, this game will be one of the best that you can possibly play. Bullet Force. I'm going to put this as C because just like Blitz Brigade and After Pulse, it was a good old classic shooting game that everybody had on their phone back in 2016, 2017. Unfortunately, in 2022, it feels pretty old and clunky and outdated. Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies. Now, I know a lot of Call of Duty fans are going to hate me for doing this, but I have to say it's probably a D-tier game in 2022. If you look at this game in 2012, this game would have been one of the very best, but you have to look past the nostalgia and, and understand the game for what it is. It literally looks like a game from 1995, and it really feels like it plays like a game from 1995. So, yeah, it just doesn't really hold up well in 2022. That's basically what I have to say. Combat Master Mobile. This is an S-tier game. The only reason it's not an S-plus tier game is because games like Battle Prime have been around for longer and they have more contents, but this is another one of those very satisfying games. The movement is awesome, probably the best out of any mobile shooting game on this list. It just doesn't have too much content yet, and if they add more content, then it will end up being higher on this list. So I think S is a good rating right now. Cops and Robbers, this is another pixelated shooting game. I've never been that much of a fan of it. I personally like Pixel Gun 3D more than it, but it's a good alternative, and I think it's an average pixelated shooting game. Let's give it a C tier rating. Cover Fire. Cover Fire is in line with Combat Master as a great offline shooting game. It is better than Battle Ops. It has tons of content, really good graphics, and I mean, literally, I think like 50 or 100 million people have downloaded this game. It's insanely popular, and if you don't have it, you should try it out. Here's a game that I guarantee you've never heard of before. It's called Crazy War, and <laughs> yeah, it's an F rating. I did a video on this long ago. It's basically Pixel Gun 3D and Battlefield put together, and it wasn't very good back then. It is not good now in 2022 because you literally can't even play it. It's no longer on the App Store and the Google Play Store, so yeah, F in the chats. Next up, Creative Destruction. It's basically NetEase's best attempt at making Fortnite mobile. I don't really like it too much. I like Fortnite mobile more. I think a B tier rating is good for it. Critical Ops is an A tier game. This is almost an S tier. Almost an S tier, but there is another CSGO mobile styled game that I think is a better rating than Critical Ops. However, this game's got a great community, and if you haven't played it yet, I definitely would recommend doing so. It's a lot of fun and very competitive. Crossfire Legends. Who remembers this game? Because I sure don't. I did a video on this long, long ago when I talked about like 10 games like PUBG, and this was basically one of those Battle Royale games that tried to compete with PUBG Mobile and then lost, and it sort of faded into history, <laughs> right? It's not very good. It's clunky, and I don't recommend playing it in 2022. Cyber Hunter. Just like Creative Destruction, it's another one of those Battle Royale games by NetEase, and it's fun, don't get me wrong, it's like a more futuristic Battle Royale with some unique elements to it, but I don't really know. I've never been that much of a fan of it, and that's why I don't make many videos on it. Here we have Dead Effect 2. This is an S-tier game, and it's awesome. It is a single-player zombie first-person shooter with amazing graphics, a great storyline, and tons of blood and gore, which is what you need in a zombie game, right? I, I definitely would recommend trying it out if you haven't done so yet. Here's another zombie game, Dead Trigger 2, and I think this is a C-tier game just because it's pretty old. Back in the day, a few years ago, this would have been much higher on the list, but nowadays, when you play it, it feels pretty outdated, and I think C is a good rating for it. I'd love a Dead Trigger 3, though. Maybe? Next up, we got Deer Hunter 2014, and oh, by the way, PETA, if you're watching this video, can you click away right now, because I don't want you to be triggered with what I have to say. Yes, I have played hunting games before, and Deer Hunter 2014 is one of those games that back in the day was the absolute best. Unfortunately, it's a very old game now. It feels very outdated, and I think 
it's a D tier rating. However, I did play Deer Hunter 2018, and that one is a little bit better. It's basically Deer Hunter 2014, but with better graphics and more realistic. I do believe there's Deer Hunter 2020 out right now, though. I haven't played it, so I don't have it on this list. Here we have Disorder. This is a game by NetEase, and I think it's one of their better ones. It's better than Cyber Hunter and Creative Destruction and ba Badlanders, in my personal opinion. It's another one of those unique battle royale, like Capture. It's just basically a blend of all of their games put together. It's very weird. It's kind of hard to describe it, but it works, and it's fun, and I would recommend trying it out. Final Fantasy VII. I'm putting this as a C-tier game. I know a lot of Final Fantasy fans are going to hate me for this. They're like, how dare you do that? But I've never played Final Fantasy before, so I'm not biased toward the series. Final Fantasy fans will literally put this at the very best. But if you actually look at the gameplay, it's just nothing spectacular. It's a very average battle royale, and there's nothing more to say about that. So yeah, I'm going to give it a C-tier rating. Fortnite Mobile, Fortnite, Fortnite. It's an S-tier game, in my personal opinion. I would put it higher, but I don't think the building works very well on mobile. I know some people have mastered it and are really, really good, but I never did. I thought it was a really hard learning curve, and uh, I just never really enjoyed it as much as I did on PC. Forward Assault. Forward Assault is like Bullet Force. It's made by the same developers, but I don't like it as much as Bullet Force, so I'm going to put it at D tier. Bullet Force is C. Forward Assault is D, and we're going to leave it at that. Next up. We got Garena Free Fire. This is an S tier game in my personal opinion, though I know there are millions of people out there around the world that would easily put this at the very best. This is the most successful game on this list, period. There's no other game that has more active players than Free Fire. So they're clearly doing something right when they're making this game. It's just for me personally, I don't really like it as much as some of these other games. I would personally prefer to play a Rainbow Six Siege styled game or Battle Prime before Garena Free Fire. Next up, we got Chinese PUBG. This is called Game for Peace and nothing special. I always was a little bit scared playing that game because I thought the Chinese government was taking my data somehow, and they probably did, <laughs> to be completely fair. But yeah, it's a C-tier game. I'd rather play regular PUBG before that one. Here we have a World War II game. This is called Ghosts of War, and it's nothing special. It's very clunky, very outdated, not great graphics, even though it's not that old of a game. I wouldn't recommend playing it right now. And here we have another game. It's called Glorious Mission. It is an F tier game. I made a video on the forgotten battle royale made by Tencent a couple of years ago, and so many people checked that video out. But they remember that the game was terrible, all right? <laughs> I would not recommend playing it. It's one of the most dry, boring battle royale games of 2022. All right, so here's the plan, guys. I'm going to stand AFK right here okay i'm not gonna do a single thing unless uh while well, the circle like moves away from me then i have to move but if there are bots everywhere in this server maybe they're going to auto track to me and then i can kill some more people so i'm literally not going to do a single thing i'm just going to stay right here and we're gonna see if anybody comes towards us and here we have another very weird game it's called grand battle royale it's a pixelated battle royale game. It's basically Pixel Gun 3D and PUBG blended together, and it's just weird. They didn't do a good job keeping this game up to date with some of these other games, and uh, yeah, let's just leave that in 2018, shall we? Next up, we got Guns of Boom. Guns of Boom is almost a B-tier game. It's just when I play it now, I envision it as more of like a Blitz Brigade type of thing, so I, I can't really put it higher than some of these other games. It's a very old game, but it's still a very satisfying game, and I do have a special place in my heart for this game because I had an entire series on my channel for this game a long time ago. It's still great and still an average game, even though it's so old. Hijacker Jack, probably a B-tier game. This is a game that I made a video on recently, and it's basically the most realistic mobile game ever because it's literally real life. I don't know how else to describe it. You should check out the video if you haven't. And uh, other than the actual thing being real life and very creative in that way, it doesn't have that amazing of a story. So I think B is a good rating for it. Hopeless Land. Hopeless Land is very similar to Crossfire Legends in that it's one of those forgotten battle royale games that tried to compete with PUBG and lost. And so there we are going to put it at C. Here we have Hyperfront. Front. Hyperfront is 
probably an S tier game. It's a very new game by NetEase and it's their closest rendition of Valorant Mobile that they can make. It's actually a very solid game, though I would imagine whenever Valorant Mobile comes out, it'll probably be one of the very best shooting games out there. But Hyperfront is an S tier game. Here we have Infinity Ops. Infinity Ops is okay. It's not that great. It's a futuristic shooting game and I've never really been a fan. I'm putting it at D tier because it feels very clunky and outdated. It's kind of old and I just wouldn't really recommend playing it. Next up, we got the two Kill Shot games. We got Kill Shot Virus, which is a good old classic zombie shooting game. And I would say it's probably a C tier game. And then Kill Shot Bravo is not a zombie shooting game. I think you have to shoot like the person that's holding the hostage or whatever like that. And that's probably D tier. It's pretty old and I'm not dying to play it again. Here we have Knives Out. Knives Out is probably a B tier battle royale game. It's basically the same as Rules of Survival and uh, I've always somewhat enjoyed just classic Rules of Survival, but uh, Knives Out is basically the same thing. So you can, you know, get a little sneak peek. Rules of Survival is probably gonna be a B tier rating as well. Here we have Last Island of Survival. This is a survival game and I'm going to put it at C. It's basically Rust where you can like build your shelter, there's dangerous animals, there's zombies, there's some other stuff around the map, but it's pretty empty, I have to say, and I think C is a good rating for it. There is a better version of that, it's called Life After. I'm almost inclined to put it at S, I just don't know if I should put it between A and S. There are other survival games by NetEase that are supposed to be like the successor to this game that are coming out that look a heck of a lot better. So I think I'm gonna put Life After as A, just because they're working on other games that look just so much better, that are the same type of survival game. Here we have a game called Lone Wolf. If you've never heard of this game before, you're missing out. It's a brutal sniper game with a very unique artwork style and a good storyline, and I really enjoyed it when I played it. I'm actually probably going to play it again pretty soon because it's actually quite enjoyable. Here we have a really good game by NetEase, probably the best one on this list. This is Lost Light. Lost Light is awesome. It's another Escape from Tarkov type of game and it does a way better job than Badlanders and any of the other games on this list. Highly recommend it. The only game that might be better is Arena Breakouts whenever that game finally comes out. Mad Gun Z. This is another one of those pixelated shooting games. I think it's a little bit better than Cops and Robbers, but not as good as Pixel Gun 3D. It's fun, and if you don't enjoy Pixel Gun 3D, you might want to give Mad Gun Z a shot. And here we have the three different modern combat games. Modern Combat 4, Modern Combat 5, and Modern Combat Versus. There are other modern combat games, obviously. I've just never played them before. If I were to rank them, Modern Combat Versus is probably a D tier game. I really did not enjoy that. It was a pretty big letdown whenever I stopped playing Modern Combat 5 and moved over to Modern Combat Versus. Modern Combat 4 is very, very old. Still good graphics, but it does feel old when you play it, so I think it's a C tier game. And then Modern Combat 5 is probably a B tier game. I think a lot of people are going to throw that nostalgia toward this game again, just like they do with Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies, and they're going to unfairly rate this game much higher. You just can't compare this, though, with games that are much newer, like Garena Free Fire, that look newer, that feel newer, that have so much more content than Modern Combat 5. So if you take away the nostalgia and just look at the game for what it is, I think B is a good rating for it. Here we have Modern Strike Online. If you haven't heard of this game before, well, it's just another one of those shooting games. It's nothing special, nothing that brings me to mind, but I do think it's enjoyable. And if you do try it out, you probably will enjoy it as well. Here we have another game that I do not enjoy. This is called Nobleman 1896. And when I first saw this game many years ago, I was really excited because it looked like a cool game from like the late 1800s. But when you actually play it, it's not very good. I would not recommend trying it out. And I think it's probably a D tier game. Here we have Nova Legacy. This is pretty old. It's a futuristic shooting first person shooter game type thing. And it's neat. Although it's not really my type of game, I think I'm going to give it a C tier rating. I know there are other people out there that would rank it higher, but for me personally, it's not my absolute favorite game in the world, and I think C is a good rating for it. Here we have another weird pixelated game that, for whatever reason, decides to have the stupid Squid Game as their logo. This game is called Pixel Combat Zombie something. I have no freaking idea. 
it could have been a B tier. But since you have the Squid Game logo, no, it's a C tier, maybe almost a D tier. I'm not going to put it at D. I'll put it at C because it's pretty in line with something like Cops and Robbers. Pixel Field. Pixel Field. Pixel Gun Battlefield. I don't know why it's called that, but this game is really innovative, or was back in the day. They had a lot of ideas that Pixel Gun 3D stole from them, and unfortunately, because Pixel Gun 3D stole those ideas, they basically went out of business and the game is dead entirely. Like, there's no people online anymore, and it's very sad. So nowadays, in 2022, it's probably a C-tier game. Pixel Fury. This game is maybe kind of like Block Strike. It's another one of those really old pixelated shooting games that feels very clunky, old, and outdated, but it's still fun and it's worth trying out every once in a while. Pixel Gun 3D. Pixel Gun 3D, in my personal opinion, is the best pixelated shooting game. Um, and I think I'm honestly going to put it at S+, plus because even though the developers really are not great, they've added so much stuff that people hate in this game, including myself. They've made it entirely unbalanced. There are certain scenarios where the game is still really enjoyable. If you can find a server where there's a bunch of people that are not using overpowered weapons, you're using some of the older classic stuff, it's still very enjoyable. And I think it's probably deserving of an S plus tier rating. Maybe it'll go to the very best. We'll have to see later on in this video. Pixel Strike 3D is another pixelated shooting game, and I'm going to put it one below Pixel Gun 3D. This game is awesome. If you have not tried out Pixel Strike 3D yet, you need to, because if you don't enjoy Pixel Gun 3D, they basically do all of those things that Pixel Gun does wrong right, and it's much more balanced, it feels better, it's more of like a Call of Duty styled pixelated shooting game with tons of content, lots of mini games. I just really enjoy it and I cannot stress enough, try it out, all right? Next up, we have another pixelated game. It's called Pixels Unknown Battleground. Notice the similarity between these two games? Yeah, it's because they're literally the exact same game. They're another one of those games that capitalized on that whole PUBG trend and it's not very good in 2022. Here's a game that is good in 2022 though. It's called Project RIP Mobile, Project RIP Mobile. This is the best zombie shooting game in my personal opinion. It's the only one that's actually very scary when I play it, all right? And that's a pretty bold statement considering, you know, it's mobile games. How the heck are they freaking scary? It's actually a really good game though with very scary zombies. It's got great mechanics and it's, it's fun. I would definitely try it out. And now we have the three different PUBG games. We have PUBG Lite, PUBG Mobile, and PUBG New States. PUBG Lights is probably an average game. I mean, it's basically the light version of PUBG with less content. So, you know, it's gonna be similar to something like Hopeless Land and Crossfire Legends, but PUBG Mobile and PUBG New States are much, much higher. PUBG New States, as much as I dislike how it's not really a true successor to PUBG Mobile, it really is a good game and you cannot deny that. It's a very, very solid game and I think it's S+. PUBG Mobile? is basically the same thing, really, honestly, in my opinion, and I really enjoy it. So I have to put them at the same rating, and it's gonna be really tough to choose one over the other. Next up, we got Retract Battle Royale, or I think it's a zombie game now. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's more of a survival zombie game. However, whenever I recently played it, it's very empty. There's not that much content. It's got great graphics, don't get me wrong, but it's very empty feeling, and you just, it's kind of boring. That's really all I gotta say there. Ride Out Heroes is an interesting one. I really enjoyed this game. I haven't played it in a very long time, but just like Disorder, it's one of the better NetEase games. It's very interesting because you have different heroes and it feels more of like an Apex Legends mobile style game, but just like from a couple of years ago. If Apex Legends mobile comes out pretty soon, I feel like it probably could be one of the very best if I actually decide to play it, but uh, I think Ride Out Heroes is an A-tier game. Rules of Survival. Remember when I talked about it earlier? Yeah, it's just like Knives Out. It's a good old classic Battle Royale game. Pretty old though, in 2022. Very dead. New update, terrible, but it's still a B-tier game. Scarfall, right in line with Rules of Survival. This game is basically the light version of Garena Free Fire. So if you can't play Garena Free Fire without having tons of lag, you wanna download Scarfall, and it's actually a fun game. I would recommend it. 
here we have another game called Shadowgun Legends. It's very similar to Nova Legacy, honestly. If you haven't played one or the other, they're pretty similar because they're these futuristic shooting games with heroes and other stuff like that. It's neat, but again, it's not really my type of game, so I'm going to put it in the C column. Here we have a game called Sniper Fury Shoot to Kill, I think is the name. I don't really remember. They change the name all the time. It's a solid sniper game where you have to shoot the guy that's holding the hostage and other stuff like that. And there's a reason why it's one of the most popular games on this list. Getting close to the end here, and my voice is pretty much gone now. We have Standoff 2. Standoff 2 is awesome. I personally enjoy Standoff 2 more than Critical Ops, though I know a lot of people will switch these games interchangeably. Standoff 2 is an awesome CSGO mobile styled game. It's very competitive, a lot of fun. If you haven't tried it out, you need to do so. Next up, we got a game called Survivor Royale. This is just like Hopeless Land and Crossfire Legends, nothing special. And honestly, I'm just gonna put it at C. It's basically like the worst version of Rules of Survival and Knives Out, made by the same company. Here we have a game called The Sun, Key to Heaven, I believe is the name. I talked about it recently in a video, and unfortunately, it's just in a very, very early stage of development. Too early for me to rank it very high. It's more of like a Fallout mobile type of game, and uh, if you like Fallout, maybe you'll like this game, but it's definitely got a long way to go before it's a more polished game. Here we have a game called Unkilled. Unkilled is another one of these zombie games. I'm gonna rank it on the same level as Killshot Virus. Nothing too spectacular, but uh, it's still fun. And if you like zombie games, you might wanna check it out. If you can't run Project RIP Mobile and Dead Effect without getting a lot of lag, maybe you wanna try out Unkilled. And here we have another extremely underrated game. Just like Battle Prime, this is a game called War After. It's got one of the best graphics out of any game on this list, and it is so satisfying when you play this game. I absolutely love it, and you need to have it downloaded on your phone so you can play it whenever you want. It is an awesome game, and I can't stress enough, you need to try it out. And getting very close to the end here, we have a game called Warface. It's not really something that spectacular in my personal opinion. I put it very similar to Modern Strike Online. It feels pretty clunky to me personally, and I feel like they could optimize it a lot better and make it, you know, better graphics and some other stuff like that. But it's still fun, sort of, and you might want to try it out. Here we have War Robots. War Robots is a robot shooting game. You don't have people that you're shooting. You're shooting other robots that you can upgrade and do some other stuff. Been a long time since I played it. I don't really know how it is in 2022, but based off of my remembrance of this game, I think B is a good rating for it. Here we have a game called World War II Heroes or World War Heroes. This is another World War II styled game. And just like the other one, Ghosts of War, it's nothing special. It's very clunky, it's outdated, and I don't really think I would recommend it in 2022. And finally, getting to the last two, we have Zombie Frontier 4. Zombie Frontier 4 is an old school zombie shooting game, just like Dead Trigger 2, and it's still a solid game. If you want to try out a zombie game, you can download any one of these games, and they all basically are the same thing. They just have different graphics, maybe some different weapons and stuff like that, but they're all equally fun. And finally, getting to the end here, we have Call of Duty Mobile. And if there's any place that this freaking game deserves, it is the best of the best. Even though the game is a couple of years old, there really isn't any other game out there like Call of Duty Mobile. And if I were to then add a couple of these weapons from the S Plus rating here up with Call of Duty Mobile, I think I would be moving PUBG New State up there with Call of Duty Mobile. I personally enjoy Call of Duty more than PUBG New State, so like put this thing off the charts, basically, right? But PUBG New State is a little bit better than Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I think Pixel Gun 3D is really, really good. I just don't know if I would put it at the same level as Call of Duty Mobile. Lost Light could very easily be all the way up here, but I'm not. I'm going to resist that, and I think I'm going to put these two games up at the very top. All of these other games, which are barely below, and then everything else right here, so you guys can see the finished list. I think that's basically it. That is me ranking all 80 games that I have played over the past 10 to 12 years in 2022, and I think it's a pretty solid list. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. 
If you did, please take a second and hit that like button and subscribe down below for more videos just like this. And I would love to do more videos like this in the future. Maybe I can rank every mobile game I've ever played before. I don't really know. Let me know down below in the comments. But um, yes, let me know what you guys think about the list. If you would like to try it out yourself, it will be linked down below in the description. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.